All right, welcome back. Here we are. Um, Happy New Year. Um, so we have a couple of things to cover tonight. But before we start with a Arachnafeed um, who's happily enjoying her new little box. And I found one book louse. That's all I could find. I couldn't find any other insects and I have been trying. Uh, I'd like to start by showing you something super cool. We got this really, really super awesome calendar. Um, and it came to us via our friends at the San Francisco Microscope. Microscopial Society. Microscopial. Microscopial. My goodness, that's a mouthful for me tonight. Microscopial Society. Microscopial Society. Microscopial. Scop scopical. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> put my foot in my mouth with that one. <laughs> That was not a microscopic mistake. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Microscopical Society. Our friends at the Microscopical Society have sent us this. We are now members. And uh, we are very excited to be part of that because that is a society of both amateur and professional microscopists people who are interest in, interested in microscopy and um, either are just starting out or who have been in it for years, who are interested from a science perspective or from an arts perspective. And um, it is, it's been around for 150 years and it's, been, it's really, really amazing. They are very inclusive, they're very welcoming and they welcome anybody with uh, any background in microscopy. Um, they have <clears throat> a meeting held here in San Francisco and uh, they're, they're very interested in wanting to connect um, microscopic amateurs and um, professionals to each other. So here's their website. Um, if you're in the Bay Area or in San Francisco, you should definitely check them out and become a member. If you have a microscope or thinking about getting a microscope, you can learn a lot from them um, and connect with others uh, through their forum. Um, we are looking forward to this. We thank them profusely um, for this nice calendar that they've given us um, because um, it's kind of piqued our interest and it's piqued um, our kids' interest, especially with the photography. Um, just the membership is $12 a year. Lifetime membership, $144. Students are free. Isn't that great? Really, really an inclusive society. Doesn't cost much. Um, wealth of knowledge on this platform. And it's piqued our interest in this uh, Nikon Small World uh, Photography Competition. This has been around for the 49 years. Um, so we are thinking about maybe joining the 50th anniversary version. Uh, it is a competition. Um, there are some beautiful top winners here. Um, these are the top 12 that made it um, into the calendar. There are plenty of runner-up um, images. My favorite. I know there's a lot of cool images. My favorite. Ah. February. It's sugar. Crystallized sugar syrup. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. So there's a lot of different techniques that um, the photographers have used in order to create these images. They've used dark field um, photography where there's this black field behind like here, that's dark field technology. There is UV lighting. There's ultraviolet, yeah, these polarized lights, um, ultraviolet lighting. There's stacking of photography so that everything is in focus regardless of the level of the photograph. Very interesting. I think we're gonna start getting into some photographs and taking some more photographs with this cool calendar and with the inspiration that it gave us. 
and maybe we'll refer to some people for assistance from the microscopical society that would be the one you would be reaching out to alrighty so tonight turn on my microscope light here we have Rachna has been enjoying her new little house um, it's got some more webs on it she did find her way to the surface or the top she's very active in there I have been having a hard time finding some bugs for her over the last couple of days um, maybe she's eaten them all who knows anyway here she is where I did find one uh, one little book louse I will switch over now to within the petri dish um, let's see we can get over to the microscope and find our book louse here there it is um, very happy to note it was the fattest book lice I could find also the only one so that kind of you know narrows your playing field a little bit but there it is it's a very fast one as you can see does not want to be on camera uh, so somehow to get that little critter in with there's our guest this evening Rachna lady of the day this Rachna is more of a daytime spider than a nighttime spider there she is she's happily perched there in the corner which i'm quite happy about you look how cute she is isn't she cute she's a birdie all right so here we go i'm gonna try and hand over rachna or hand over rachna snack without losing both rachna um Remember that she's an oxyopede, oxyopes, oxyopes scolaris. Um, there she is. And I'm going to try and get this fun little book louse, oh book louse, it's their scientific name, uh, into Rachna's enclosure without losing Rachna or the book louse. Um, not really keen on doing that too often. Um, this time, in order to kind of make things a little bit faster, I might grab one of the extra petri dishes we have here and see if I can move some of that um, greenery um, out. Now, book lice, that's what we call them, um, they're not really book lice. Um, they have an actual scientific name that is not Buclaus or Buclaus. It's Socoptera. So 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 um, it is not, in fact, an actual louse. They do not bite um, people. They go and eat decaying matter and often the glue that binds books, hence why they're called book lice. You tend to find them in old books um, uh, in the bindings um, and they do not they like humid environments um, and so they actually um, they will eat on they will tend to thrive more in human environments and that is actually why most libraries have air conditioning to keep the um, humidity outside of the library so that they don't get pests like book lice. Isn't that interesting? So I'm going to try and remove, hopefully without removing Ragnum, just quickly here. I don't know how many of her little webs are on this little tree, but I'm going to try and remove the tree. That was successful. Put that here. That was her little home here that she's been living with for a couple of days most of it like a christmas tree that's the last piece of the holidays that we have in our house she's probably wondering where all her furniture went and i'm gonna try and move her over move the, the critter over into her environment luckily for us the critter's on the ceiling 
Let's see if we can move both. One. Let's do this in a scientific method and let's see if this even fits. No critters in that one. Underneath our microscope and our light. If the critters are ceiling. So that I can just lift. I know you can't see much. Hmm. I might have squished the book rolls. <laughs> You're in for a great show tonight, folks. I'm going to butcher a, butcher a name and butcher a louse live on camera let's see if I can find a very scientific instrument to move um, to move the louse over um, there are over yeah definitely squish that buddy that's what you get for trying to escape let's see if she'll eat it anyway um, one second, and then I can go into a little spiel about book lace. Um, there's the book lace in the corner. Not that that makes much of a difference now. Um, there are over 3,000 species of these so sosids, these soft-bodied insects that don't bite humans or, or pets. Um, worldwide, they feed on mold and various plants and animal matter. Um, often they damage damp books and papers, so old newspapers as well. Uh, they live in warm, humid areas and can produce eight generations of family members in a year. And the males drum their abdomens with their antenna to produce a tickling sound, which is their mating call. Isn't that... Delightful. I did not know that part. Um, maybe we can just make it look like the book house is moving. If she even wants that. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oops, she just kind of walked across that. Well, that's not very fun, is it? That's a bit of a blooper reel. Um, she's really trying to... She's got one little set of webbing. I'm trying to either get the book louse piece to her. There you go. You're right in front of her. Come on. Some things might just... Like, she's almost touching it. Will she... I didn't feed her yesterday, or or I think actually even the day before. Oh. Well, she's got it. Maybe it won't be so boring after all. Let's put her in view. There. It's kind of like fast food, I guess. It's not really fighting back, so she doesn't really have much to work with. But she's probably still going to start the regurgitation process. Yes, she is. And she will do that, well, I guess she didn't have to hunt very hard for that one, extra oral digestion of this one. And that is that refluxing extra oral digestion that she's doing, and that's where she's, that's the um, book less in her mouth, that's where she's spewing this, in this case she doesn't have to actually spew any venom because I've done the work for her by squishing that thing, but she will here be infusing the um, book lace with uh, venom and an extra, uh, the digestive enzyme that helps her to liquefy um, 
her prey and then she will be in adjusting it and then regurgitating it again um, until she has everything that she can eat out of it and then it'll go to her mid stomach which will take over the digestion process and help break down um, the remaining nutrients that she can obtain from such a small prey um, and that'll help with her it'll help get the nutrients and the proteins that she needs for digestion and that helps spiders like this um, where they have such a narrow digestive tract uh, to have that liquefied diet that helps them to live for weeks at a time without food uh, or water if they need need to. And so that's exactly what she's gonna start doing now. We've got a nice picture here where she, you'll probably see the abdomen of the book louse expanding and retracting with those digestive enzymes um, when she starts filling it. When she's ready. If we were to take a stacked image of um, Rachna holding the book louse, we would start up here potentially and we would take, this is that photo stacking technique, we would take pictures and picture and picture and picture and picture, as many pictures as we want and we were adjusting the focus focus sorry down rachna as she's eating and you see that there are different areas and levels that are coming into view and we would be taking those photos as we continue until we have rachna completely taken um here is the top of her head and we would continue and continue and continue um until we're at the very top and those last little hairs are also in view and then we would put it into a photo stacking tool that would combine all of those photos together that show the most focused area in those photos to create one very clear image of um, the spider in this case with her prey. <clears throat> so let's see what we can do here. The bottom light is quite strong. Let's see if we can adjust it a little bit. That gives us a different color. Oh, we've gone here. Let's see here. Oops. We're going to move the angle of the bottom mirror as well. Let's see if we can focus the light a little bit and then move the angle of the bottom mirror and that's going to change the lighting that is going through um, based on the reflection and now we've got a, a, a clouded glass plate um, over top of that mirror but you can still see that the light is changing with this light you can see a little bit more into Rachna's paws I'm sorry this is that gold light here maybe if we lower this you'll see um, a little bit almost through Rachna's paws um, and then we'll change the light here. Now this is without the, the LED lights on top. And this is only the bottom light or very little of the top light. And so I kind of like, you can see different hairs that show up on her, but you can't really see her prey very well. Kind of like, I'm gonna put the top light back on. I think um, this shows the western lung spider that we have here in a good light. Excuse the pun. We can also change the focal point here of the lighting. And I'm going to just open it very wide so we get the most amount of light in. And now there's our western lung spider and she's, see her nice legs. She's got a nice um, yellowy legs uh, at the connection point to her lower abdomen and the western link spider that we have here 
as these two little claws up in the front, also of her little legs, um, little arms that she can use to grab onto things with. And right now she's grabbing on to that book lace. And you can see that the abdomen of the book louse is pumping a little bit. And that is, um, that is the digestive enzymes. Change the light a little bit. Um, there we go. You can see those digestive enzymes and the inside of the book lace. Those are those little white flakes uh, on the inside of the abdomen. They will at one point, you'll see, get sucked out of um, the abdomen. It's really quite amazing to see. She's really pushing the fluid in. Oh, this is a very normal process of digestion for Western lynx spiders. is pushing in those digestive enzymes. You can see it, the um, abdomen is inflating slightly at the rib cage area. See, you can see there's movement on the connection point between the upper I guess shell almost of this soft bodied louse um, and there's fluid moving back and forth. I will not, with this is such a nice angle, I won't move um, the western link spider to put her on a different angle um, in order to see her mouth. This is a nice angle of the you know, almost clear body um, of the book louse that you can see. She's really working at this little one. In total, it usually takes Brachna between when she has to hunt. Um, this Western Lynx spider for such a book louse takes maybe 20 to 30 minutes to eat um, and hunt. Now we've taken the hunting out of the picture for her, um, but uh, she will, she'll maybe take 15 minutes, I guess to eat this in its entirety. Seems fair to say. And she will, um, once she's, let's restart that. If it were a normal hunt, what she would normally do is either attack her victim, pounce on the victim, because that is the typical method of the western lynx spider, is that they um, lay in waiting and then they pounce onto their victim uh, unsuspectingly. The victim is unsuspecting of such a pounce. Mm, they will attack by either arranging their prey in a position that is favorable to the western lynx spider. However, if the prey is bigger or is fighting back, they do puncture the, the prey quite often, uh, injecting venom as uh, they go, and then they are able to maneuver the prey um, to an area that they, however, they can hold them best so that they are not injured. And those first pumps that they do with this extra oral digestion and in particular the reflexing extra oral digestion is um, they do still ingest a venom so that they don't fight back uh, and don't get injured. And that allows them to, to take over prey that is actually bigger than they are. So they these types of spiders are known to take down small grasshoppers and wasps and so. Um, 
they are able to do that through this method of attacking, puncturing, and then manipulating their prey to do um, to the area that is favorable to them. Once they do start their digestion process, which she's doing right now, the western lynx spider and many lynx spiders um, then adjust their prey in between um, and flip and rotate their kind of their carcass um, so that they can ensure that these digestive enzymes uh, can can penetrate into a new spot or a spot that might still have more juices um, that need to be sucked out a little bit better um, so she might adjust her book louse here Let's see if we can get a nice image here. So you can see the abdomen is expanding. So she will at one point rotate the book louse. Um, what we saw with the moth is that they, and the book lice that we've had so far, is that she tends to go around the neck area um, at the connection point of the neck uh, in order to uh, start the feeding process. So um, the Western lynx spiders, um, for those of you who think, oh, this is a jumping spider, they do jump, but they are not technically considered a jumping spider. Um, jumping spiders don't tend to have, they have similar eye patterns, but they don't tend to have the same type of knuckle uh, type head that rack uh, that Rachna or this western lynx spider demonstrates where their head really bulges up. Um, that Coneheads movie from the 1990s um, where she's got her eyes like that. The true jumping spiders have more of a flat head um, and the western lynx spiders don't. Uh, they've got this kind of knuckle type head where their eyes are on. And then it goes down and then she's able to see her prey. So in case you find a, a spider that's jumping, it can't always just assume it's a western lynx after seeing this video or a lynx spider. Um, yeah, you can see some little fluid moving from that abdomen. Um, western lynx spiders have a knucklehead. Now, I haven't figured out um, if any of the prey that she ingests is um, dangerous for her. And if they know that off the top of their, like, by looking at a prey, if some will con be considered toxic. I'm not entirely sure, actually, also if spiders are colorblind or how they see and how they detect um, potential prey or potential um, competitors, not competitors, they are um, potential enemy enemies. And these things at the end, these black um, pokies on the end of her arm, those are called um, Tar metatarsal claws, those are like fingernails from uh, a spider. A tarsal claw, sorry, a tarsal claw. Like your metatarsal, your finger, a tarsal claw. Fascinating to watch um, the ease with which she just liquefies such a critter. 
any critter that we've seen her um, digest, this Western Lynx spider does it with ease. You can really see that abdomen of the book lace um, filling. You can see bubbles coming up from uh, inside. Oh, she's really filling it again. She's working very hard here on, on pushing that full. And So um, she's working hard from, to push these digestive enzymes into the book louse. And she does that where the digestive enzymes are actually coming from more of her, if you were to look at her back um, torso, the digestive enzymes are coming from the mid gut area. So kind of midway through her back torso whereas the <clears throat> she has a venom gland in the front um, that is attached to her fangs and um, oh, there she's turning it uh, you can see it's very empty now um, so those venom glands are directly at whoops sorry i hit her by accident it's a little bit scary um, they are directly under above her so her fangs are here and they kind of run in between her fangs and they leave, they lie directly underneath her eyes and that's where the, the venom gland is. And then she has a mouth that attaches to a sucking stomach and that brings it through a very, very small tube um, that leads to her, her mid gut. Uh, so she has to access that venom much more quickly than she does have to access the, the digestive enzymes there. She's flipping it over. It's a quick meal tonight. Um, so she has to she has to have access to those makes sense to the venom before she has access to the, the stuff to digest with. And those um, let's see if I can point to something. Those enzymes would come from around this area, this kind of shaded area here in the middle, but that first kind of stripe, and I'll just put the dot on that, makes a lot more sense. This kind of mid area, um, that's probably where her digestive enzymes are gonna come from, that's her mid gut. And underneath her eyes, which are here, she has a venom gland that attaches to her big fangs in the front. And then she eats with her mouth underneath those fangs. And pardon me, and that's where she pushes all her digestive enzymes from. Let's see if I can move her so that she, let's see, she does this upside down view. And we'll zoom out here. Let's see. Now she is hanging upside down. She's very agile. She's too close to the surface for me to look at. Unfortunately, with this big um, glass that she's on, I can't uh, get much lower unless I maybe take out one of our pieces of glass here. Maybe that brings her into a light that might be favorable to us. If we look this way, maybe I can focus. She's moving that thing around. That's the best focus I'll be able to get of her at this level because she is so close to our working space of our lens and our viewing plate down here. It's very hard to get. She's, she's very close to the lens at this height. Um, so our working distance has changed quite a bit. Um, it's very different from when she's upside down. I'll put her back on that. Muted light here. Let's 
see if I can turn it around again and get her back into focus. Squeaky, squeaky. There's, um, there she is. Not that much I would have wanted to see the purple. Well, as you can see, she's done. That's all that's left of the book louse. As you can tell, it's not much. Um, there's a squished lower tarsal. She has sucked everything out of there. There are some legs that are in focus and she is sitting very close to it. Um, probably looking for her trees again to climb on. There she is. So that's all we're going to get for Arachnus tonight. This beautiful western lynx spider did in fact eat um, the prey that I had already killed. She wasn't interested in those types of uh, prey beforehand. Um, I think because she had been she had been fed quite a bit, um, but today she it was a very fresh kill, so that's probably why she took the opportunity to eat it. Um, I think with that we will leave Rachna in peace. I'll put her her leaves back in there um, again, and thank you again to the San Francisco Microscopical Society. That is really a lovely gift from you. Um, we're going to very much enjoy this calendar and the inspiration that it gives us. We're very much looking forward um, to taking photographs and learning much more about, because we are very much amateurs, but learning more about our own microscope, um, the Nikon SMZ-U, um, but also uh, photography and stacking and having some adventures with the world around us. And we very much look forward to connecting with the Microscopical Society here in San Francisco in the near future. And thank you very, very much for this wonderful calendar. Thank you for joining us tonight and we'll see you next time, maybe with some more interesting food for Rachna or something else to talk about. A new topic, perhaps. Who knows? We'll see you soon. All right, take care.